In a world that's saturated with social media content, it seems like everyone and their mom these days has a podcast. But these days I see so many podcasts about relationships, hot takes, spicy topics, everybody has something to say. Now today I'm going to respond to three videos that revolve around the topics of waiting for a marriage and relationships in general. So as always, let's dive in. If you started dating a girl that wanted to wait till after marriage to do the business, right? at this age right now, would you do it? No. No, I'm not doing it. I I'm can't marry someone it. without knowing. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, really? Dude, but the imagine, relationship. Serious, imagine bro? you're on your honeymoon and you find out it sucks. Exactly. Yeah, but we gotta dude. turn it back. We gotta go back. <laughs> dude, no way. You would? Yeah. You would wait? Bro, it's like, sex isn't the end all be all of a relationship. Oh, no. so you tell me, you tell me, you watch Netflix and you go to sleep? <laughs> Paul, so <laughs> you'd stick it out for this girl if she was the girl of your dreams? If she's the girl of my dreams, then... The sex is not what's making me stay. Oh, Paul's I mean, a good guy. This is a dumb myth. Now, I'm not married, but I have learned a lot from married couples that I know and I have watched online. The idea that you need to figure out if you're sexually compatible before you get married is only relevant if you appro approach relationships with the mindset of what I can get. But if you approach sexuality in your marriage selflessly, thinking of your spouse's desires before your own, there's no such thing as sexual incompatibility. You don't need to try before before you buy. The truth is, it's really just an excuse to get in the sheets with somebody that you're not fully committed to in the covenant of marriage. To be blunt, based on what I've heard, it's awkward, yeah, and it can be bad, sure, yeah, but what happened to growing together? What happened to like, oh, okay, like we'll figure this out together as opposed to like some sort of performance where you need to perfectly meet the expectations of your partner, otherwise out the door on the streets for you. It's like, what is this? That's such a toxic way around sexuality and, and those expectations. Expectations. Now, for you guys, if your boyfriend or girlfriend or the person you're talking to uh, does isn't really receptive to the idea of waiting for sex to, to, until you're married, like that's not something that you should be pursuing. That should be immediate red flag because God is really clear about that. Like he really is. And the truth is you really don't want somebody either that's like, oh, I guess if that's how you feel, then we can do that. Like you want somebody that has their own personal convictions about holding to what God says in his word. You don't want to be the only one that says, this is what we got to do. This is how we should go about this because this is honoring to God. You want to be on the same page in that way so you can encourage each other and not lead each other into temptation. Maybe you're thinking, Isaac, well, it's just this one little thing. And like we line up on pretty much everything else. Like, maybe I won't find somebody else. In that context, you're being led by fear and worry. And that's not a good way to approach a relationship, thinking that you need to cling on to this because you feel like there's nobody else that will ever love you or will ever accept you. Like, that's just a lie. Ultimately, it's not about finding a perfect person, but you want to make sure that you're on the pa same page of these core fundamental areas and make sure you're shored up in this stuff too. Like, where's your foundation? Are you really wanting to stick to the word of God? Is that something that God has placed on your heart to hold as a conviction? Or are you still kind of straying and wobbling around? because it's going to be hard to go in a relationship with somebody that's also kind of wobbly on what they believe when you're not really shored up in what you believe. The assumption very often is that you have to sort of run the gauntlet of hookup culture in order to find a partner. One of the things that I advise in the book, which I'm told is a complete crazy thing to advise, is to hold off on having sex for a few months in the first few months of a relationship because it's a good way of testing whether he's serious about you. It's a good way of not being clouded by hormones if you're trying to like vet a partner. And I hear from women, I'm like, what are you talking about? What kind of man is going to wait three months to have sex? A man that's actually really into you, I'd imagine. But it feels impossible. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have come full circle for so long. Women were told that that empowerment and liberation is sexual freedom. But now people are actually coming to terms with the fact that this doesn't produce the relationship that they want. Now, for much of the world, it's a purely pragmatic analysis. Well, I, I should hold off on having sex with this person because that will make our relationship stronger and ultimately, um, you know, give us a longer, more happy, fulfilling relationship, which isn't a bad idea or, or want. But ultimately, I, our goal as Christians is what does God want us to be doing in this? It's not just kind of like, how can I manipulate manipulate this relationship to make it work, but truly what has God commanded of me and what does God desire for me? And so when we look at this idea of trying to like, okay, let's hold off for three months so then it can be a little bit better, it won't ultimately mitigate the problem of a lack of commitment or man taking responsibility or being the pursuer, or being intentional or, or being caring even. Until you are in the covenant of marriage, sex and sexuality will always be a detriment. It will always be a twisting of God's good gift. It will actually bring about destruction as opposed to flourishing, where in marriage it is 
flourishing. It is fruitful. It's amazing, right? But then outside of that context, you think it will bring about closeness within the relationship. No, it brings divide. It brings shame. It brings guilt. And if you or your partner aren't right with God, you have yet to have your heart transformed, then the idea of waiting a little bit to have uh, intimacy isn't really going to do a whole lot because you or, or they are still being led by their sinful desires. Quick tangent to talk about dating a non-Christian. It is much bigger than just what you're going to teach your kids. God, if she's the one, please make it clear. Um, bro, she's not a Christian. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to see if it's God's will for me to date her or not. Okay, but the Bible already says we shouldn't be unequally yoked with unbelievers, and that's especially true for romantic relationships. Okay, okay, I get it. I'm just trying to see if there's an exception here. Like, I'm just trying to get a word from God. Man, don't try to sidestep God's word, what he's already made clear. I know it can be a tough pill to swallow sometimes, but you need to know it's ultimately for your good. Now, when I talked about this on Instagram, I got significant pushback because people were saying, hey, my mom and my dad, they met and my mom was a Christian and my dad wasn't, but ultimately he became a Christian and now we have a Christian family and isn't that amazing? So your idea, your belief that you shouldn't date a non-Christian uh, doesn't recognize the, the reality of that, you know, good things can come from this and God can use this, use this. Look, I have similar stories in my life and with people that I know, but ultimately we need to be asking ourselves the question, does the fact that God used an unwise decision to bring about something great justify our constant making of those unwise decisions? Like, are we in the back of our mind saying, well, I know this isn't good or this isn't ideal or this isn't maybe even God glorifying and isn't a wise decision, but you know, God could bring something really amazing out of it. Like, yeah, but we're stepping into sin. Like God directly says, like, do not step into sin. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. I know people are still not going to be convinced. They're going to say, no, I can convert them. Or, uh, you know, I have examples in my life of it going good afterwards. And, but the truth is, it's like, do you really want to um, not only kind of rebel against God's wish for you, but also kind of enter into this situation where you are either forced at the end of the day, if they do not convert, to you either compromise or to enter this relationship where they're following the ways of the flesh and you're walking walking the ways of the spirit and there is a di direct divide there. Like, do you really want to enter a relationship like that? I know some, some people say, well, I'll break up with her if she doesn't become a Christian at the end of the day. It's like, really? Like, you want to ha have all of that time leading up to this moment where you just have to break up with her because she didn't make that decision. I know people think it's a great opportunity to be a witness and be, you know, I can be a good example, but you don't want to bring that into a relationship. You can do that as a friend. You can be a witness as a friend and yeah, you can help people grow within a relationship, but if they don't have that core fundamental foundation of a relationship with Jesus, it is going to be extremely challenging. And that's part of the reason why God doesn't want us to enter into those relationships. I know some of you aren't convinced that's fine. This is my perspective. This is what I believe God is teaching in his word. But I would just caution you to not just say, oh, well, God can bring something good out of this. Like you're immediately justifying the fact that you know it's not the wisest decision. Cool. Yeah. It feels like if you go out there on the dating market and you have that restriction applied, you can't compete. Well, you can't compete. You're not going to get as many dates. But the point of dating isn't to get a date. I don't know what, what the studies show, but I would argue that this isn't good for men either. And it doesn't make men happy either. Because actually, men also feel disgust about hookup culture and sex. It might be like a bit of a status boost and a temporary fleeting yeah. moment of joy or whatever. But actually, I don't think in the long run that makes men happy either. I totally agree. Your goal isn't just to find a date or go out with somebody. Your goal is to find someone that you could see yourself marrying, spending the rest of your life with. And obviously that's a that's a high expectation and you don't kind of push that in on a first date. But ultimately it's like, hey, yeah, that's the purpose. It's not just to go out with random people. It's to say, can I see myself you know, spending my life with them and also serving God with them. I think we're often caught up in the mentality of what feels good in the moment. And we're not really so concerned with the vision of this relationship. Can you build with this person? Can you grow with this person outside of their physical characteristics? What do you admire about them? All important questions. I want to know from you, what are some questions that you would add to that, that you should be asking yourself as you're evaluating? Is this somebody that I want to spend my life with or even just date or go out with? Put those in the comments down below.
I just want to pop in here real quick and tell you a little bit about Patreon. Patreon is a way that people support me on a monthly basis so I can continue to make content that equips people to follow Jesus daily. Thank you to everyone that's already signed up and if you haven't and you're interested, we do video calls, we have exclusive videos, there's an exclusive Discord. I'd be so grateful if you signed up and supported what I'm doing. Click the link in my description. Now, on to the video. What do you guys think is the worst thing about being in a relationship? The worst thing. I have an answer in my head, but I'm about to get canceled for this. I'm not canceled. To... Get canceled. <laughs> yeah, get canceled. No. I'll, be, I'll get canceled with you. I'll, I'll you you say what you want to say, and I'll say like I agree. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <right? laughs> I mean, because it's only beautiful things to be in a relationship. But I'll say the bad thing is, is well, you don't have options anymore. I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you don't have options anymore? Um, have... I just got to make a statement to the camera. Uh, to my to my wifey, I I don't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm super happy with just one option. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of men and women can resonate with this sentiment, but I think it's in large part due to like the Tinder movement and you know not necessarily online dating, but that we are so connected on social media, sliding into somebody's DMs. There are so many options for so many folks. I know some people you don't feel that way, and maybe that's because your standards are that much more high, and that's a good thing. Like take that as a you know badge of honor. But for a lot of folks in the world, it feels like, hey, man, like there's so many people, there's so many options. And uh, and then you just get into comparison mode. You're looking and you're saying, well, all these things line up, but maybe I could find somebody just a little bit better, or just a little bit more attractive. I think generally in culture, the idea of settling down can be seen as like a burden to those who are just really in it for themselves. They're looking out for their long term personal pleasure. And so the idea of settling down with one person man, that's a risk. What if they don't give me what I need for the rest of my life? At the end of the day, it comes down to what you believe a relationship is for. Yeah, it's about companionship. Yeah, it's about uh, finding that romantic connection and being with somebody that you love and like all of that is great. What I personally need or my personal satisfaction or my personal fulfillment is at the core kind of primary striving or pursuit. I believe ultimately God created relationships to image him and bring him glory. So God is at the center, not our own personal needs. That doesn't mean that we push um, what we want out of a relationship at the door. That doesn't mean we just settle or we push away our own personal preferences, but it means at the core of it, this is about God. And so that we can be at peace, that when we've kind of been through all the, the stages of seeing, okay, is there red flags here? Are there yellow flags? What are the issues here? Do that we line up on the core beliefs and lifestyle and stuff like that? Like once you've been through that, then you don't need to worry about, okay, like what if we get into this relationship and we maybe even get married and 20 years down the way, like I'm not getting what I need. You don't need to have that be a primary concern because ultimately it's it's not about you getting exactly what you need all the time. It's about this kind of area of sacrifice. It's, it is a sacrifice because you're looking at the needs of somebody else, not just yourself. I think in general, people have been fed this lie that long-term relationships in marriage are just by nature burdensome and onerous and they get stale and dry as time goes by. And maybe you've seen examples of that kind of marriage in your own life and it scares you off from, oh, do I really want to be committed to this? person for my whole life because maybe we'll end up like that. And I've had those same thoughts too as somebody that's not married. Some of the couples that I know paint a very different picture of growing together, of loving one another, of, of stretching one another to be more like Jesus. That kind of companionship that moves beyond just the, the passion of the beginning but enters into this long lifetime stable and sacrificial love. That is the kind of relationship that I want to strive towards. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos like this all the time. God bless and I'll see you next time.